together. I want to show you how to prepare your fabric. I have all of this fabric, and I don't want to fight this fabric. So what I'm going to do is cut off a nice yard, yard and a quarter, something like that, to work with. I'll nick it with my cutter and then tear it across the grain line. That is a straight of grain. Now I can deal with this amount of fabric. It is not so bulky and cumbersome that I'm going to have trouble with it. You don't want to fight it the whole time. Now the next step in squaring up the edge of your fabric, get your selvages, this top edge with the writing or the white or the little holes in it where they hooked it to the machine. Hold it up where the two selvages are even across the top. Not on the sides, but across the top. Hold it up and see if it hangs straight. And I don't know if you can tell, but this has got some blousiness in it. That means it is not going to cut straight. Slide the front one to the right or left, or the back one, whatever you need to do until it hangs straight. When you get it to hang straight, it, it will just hang straight down there. You don't have a problem. If you have a crease in it that's giving you problems, open your fabric out. Iron that crease out and then work with it. Don't iron a crease in. It might not be in the right place. Now, I want to set this fabric down with the top edges still even. And I call this hand pressing. I don't know the formal name of it, but I call it hand pressing. Then take the very bottom of your fabric. Pinch it where it, it was uh, when you put it down on the table. And bring it up to where it's about a half an inch to an inch from the top. I don't care what the measurement is. Just make sure you can see the back a little bit and that it's the same distance from the top all the way across. When you get it like this, you're ready to cut it off the end and square it up. I take my handy dandy big old square that I love so much and take a line of your ruler and even it up with the bottom of your fabric. Now, if you're not comfortable with your rotary cutter, have some of your ruler hanging below, and I'll show you how you won't cut your fingers off if you're uncomfortable. But once you get that line across the bottom, make sure all four layers extend beyond the end of your ruler so you make sure you get all the layers. Then take your rotary cutter and put it down on your cutting mat to the right of your ruler Come to the left until you hear it tap. When you hear it tap, it's against the ruler. Some people will go to cut and they accidentally put it down on the ruler and they come right across and get their fingers. So don't do that. Put your cutter down. Come to the left and tap. Now, make a tripod out of your fingers. Hold that ruler in place. Don't let it slide. Don't push on it so hard that you shove it out of the way. So you hold your ruler in place. And then you're going to do an abdominal crunch. That's how you're going to get the downward force on this ruler. Take your finger, put it on the pad that it's got so you can press down. Do that abdominal crunch. This is your one sit-up of the day. And cut the end of the fabric off. Now, this is the trick. Make sure you get it the first time. If you have to do this bit, you don't have a good edge to measure from. You don't want to saw it off. You want to cut it off in one complete cut. If you don't, you may need to sharpen your blade. You can put a new blade in or you can get you a blade sharpener at the fabric store. They're very nice and they will save you money in the long run. I now have the end of my fabric squared up. I have a cutting mat that's small enough I can rotate it. I don't want to touch my material. I don't want to dislodge anything. Now, I'm going to need three and a half inch strips of this floral to make that strip piece that was in the block. So, I'm going to take my ruler, line my three and a half. Don't line your two and a half. Some new students have a tendency to go to the three and the closest half that they find, and sometimes it's two and a half. Make sure and count one, two, three and a half. We're going to line the three and a half up with the edge of the fabric, and the top should be even with the, the what used to be the bottom of the fabric. The top should be even with that now. So we've got that right. We're going to do our second sit up of the day, and we have our first strip. We'll continue cutting like this until we have all of the strips we need, and then we'll work on our squares. I have my six 
and a half inch strips of my red and my white to uh, cut out. I have good size spacing. And be careful if you're using this white on white. It's hard to tell sometimes. But I have good size spacing so when I cut these out in twos, they're already in place. I want to take this OmniGrid 96L ruler. And because I'm working with a 6 inch finished square, I'm going to put the line that has the 6 on it at the bottom. Now I want just enough hanging over here to cut these selvages off. This is the only time you have to cut that end off right there. Make sure that line at the bottom is even. Now the tip up here should stick beyond your fabric. It sticks out a little bit more and it's supposed to. There's a little line there that should come up to the top of the fabric. Don't let your ruler slip. Cut your selvage off. And this time we're going to come around and cut down that way. Now if you have a little table where you can walk around it, that's really good. You have your first set. And if you'll look on this end right here, let me see if I can get it where you can see it. It has a blunted point. That's supposed to be there. For our second cut, we're going to flip the ruler completely around, put the sixth line at the top, and the right edge on this hypotenuse here should be even with the edge that you just cut. Now, cut along this way. Now, if you'll work from right to left, it might work better for you. Be careful with your cutters. But I have two of these already layered, ready to sew them together. I'll do two more, and that will be a block swirl. I'll keep going until I have enough for all 12 blocks. If you start on the other end, the left side of your fabric, you're going to get the sixth line at the bottom of your strips. That little bit will be sticking up there. You'll have one awkward cut to cut your selvages off. And then you will be cutting from the correct side if you're right-handed. There's one. Get that six line at the top. Line that up. It should stick out beyond. There's two. And I'll keep on until I have six blocks worth of the red and white and six more blocks worth of the green and the white, the teal and white. The first part of the quilt that I'm going to work on is sewing the floral strip to the white strip so that we can cut our blocks from those. I've gotten the top edges and the right edges even and I know where my scant quarter inch seam has to go on my needle so that it will be correct. Keep an eye on the right side of the presser foot and make sure it's running where it should. Um, get your edges even and then get ready to start sewing. We're going to sew these end to end. When you finish one, start chaining the next one right behind it and we'll get these two stacks of strips together. I get my right edges even and I sew to that point and then I stop and reposition. When you stop, make sure your needle is in the down position so that nothing will shift. We want a stitch length about two and a half. We want it tight enough to hold everything together, but not so tight if we had to take something apart. And when I get these done, I will press the seam toward the dark floral print, and we'll get started on the next step. 